usually when we coach together, I can count on you to go as deep as we need to. Mm -hmm. And you'll always understand. You'll always understand me. And you'll always understand the depth of the ideas. And that's that's been an incredibly productive for me. And now you're coming out with something. You're talking about how you want to help people meet their goal. Mm. That is so much more focused. And I mean, you've always been very practical. Mm. But I'm and and my reaction to that is interesting. I'm quite excited by that. Mm. Uh, I'm I'm thinking what. What would that mean? And, I, and, and I, you know, at some point, I want to talk to you about some of what's happened when you and I've talked about my goals. But right now, why don't you say a little bit about that? What is what do you mean when you say meet your goal? Right. And I really appreciate how you're starting this. The frame that you're giving is is our coaching relationship. And, and I think really this word depth is I'm very I'm very proud of that. Yeah. That really it's pretty hard for someone to go so deep that I don't understand them. Even if it requires um like a psychic uh leap. Yep. I can make that leap. And so meet your goal is in that context, but you're right, a lot of people don't know me, and so they don't they just might think, oh, I'm like another coach who helps you meet your goal, kind of like slam dunk. Yeah, there's a basket or I've been using a soccer ball because they they use the word goal in soccer. And I used that image once by itself. And then I thought, oh, that's nothing like the kind of goal I'm interested in. A goal that I'm interested in. And I had to think, what how would I symbolize that? Because in my social media work, I'm I often think visually because I think that's really we're, we're mammals and I feel like we're very visual. And what I came up with was a path leading to an unknown destination, the end of the path is not visible. And so what I'm interested in is people meeting their goal. And at the same time, that goal being their path, that goal changing them. So the the depth is fully respected. Yes. I, I seem to only work with the people who are deep. And that leads me to think that people are deep, that all people are deep. They may operate on the surface or they may not. And if they operate on the surface, the world often rewards them by making them feel normal. And if they don't operate on the surface easily, we, and I include myself there, may feel quite weird. And you know, you've been really helpful in helping me unpack that I'm there's just no way in which I'm weird. Um, and it's sort of irrelevant to go on and on about that. But whether whichever way we may operate, the fact is that I think people are deep and we have we may have superficial goals and those are great, but they're not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in goals that change us. And it's not in in a funny way. It's not that it's very Zen of me. It's not the goal per se. And yet it is the goal. I'm interested in the goal. And I'm very interested in a certain kind of goal that I've been calling a worthy goal. And a worthy goal is a goal that changes us. A worthy goal is when we might even have a hard time admitting maybe to ourselves even, but certainly to other people because they may shoot it down. It may be too worthy. People may think that the goal is worthier than we are somehow. Who are we to want that thing? And meanwhile, we do want it. And those are where I'm interested. And I think my coaching is useful. You know, I've just got to say that's beautiful. I mean, that's really beautiful. I'm really touched by that. Uh, And I really respond to it. Here's here's an example. Mm. Recently, we were talking, and I told you that I was going to have a week of free time with no obligations, and that I was kind of looking forward to it. And you said, "What what about setting a goal for yourself for that week? What would you like to get done?" And I thought, "Well, that's an interesting idea. I really should do that." And I thought and thought about it, and I couldn't think of anything. So I thought, okay, I am going to start noticing my behavior in the next few days and see what I might establish as a goal. So the first thing I want to say is your suggesting that to me changed the way I paid attention to myself. Mm. Just the idea of a goal, and I love the idea of a worthy goal, Mm. and that it is one that changes us. 
just the idea of it caused me to start noticing more. Mm -hmm. What I noticed was that I felt an urgent need of a break. Now, it's not like I've had a busy life, but there have been things that have been sort of running around in my brain and I needed a break. And I thought that's going to be my goal is to clear my mind enough that I'm ready for whatever is next. And I thought that's exactly the kind of thing that Beth would really be interested in. That That is the kind of goal behavior that I think you're talking about. Yes. I love that you, I feel so moved, touched, that honored that you realized I would, I would love that. And I also think seasonally, so there's different goals that are different, that are appropriate at different times of the year. And now to me, the fall, this we're doing this at the end of August. And that to me is the harvest season. And I think there's nothing more perfect than taking the kind of break with intention that you took, like you really set an intention. I'm going to take a break. And when we do that, we design the break in a certain way. And there's a harvesting there of all you've done and been for the year in in anticipation of the new year starting in the fall. I know some people see the new year starting even in the winter or the spring. For me, it starts in the fall because that's what I'm interested in is going from the subtle to the gross or the visible. And the fall is the very subtle beginning of the of the year as far as manifestation is concerned. So I love that. You know, there was a, a thing that's been occurring as we're talking to me, and that is my first thought when I saw Meet Your Goal was, oh boy, when I when people say that, I, I think it's going to be a forced march. I right. think it's going to be, you've got to get this done and you've got to get it done on time. And who you are doesn't matter in the process. But I thought, uh, I've never heard Beth do that. I mean, that's just not what she does. That's not who she is. So what is it? And you're you're really elucidating it beautifully for me um, because I think it is a journey. And I think we're going to discover what I need to discover in the process. And I've always known I can count on you for that, that I can discover what I need to discover. Right. I can discover what will move me and what will create change in my life um, in in interaction with you. And I think that's what you're talking about here. You're right. I'm noticing, and this is true increasingly, especially as I age, that I'm more and more confident. I'm more and more settled and solid. So I don't need you to like reflect anything back to me about the wonderfulness of my coaching or my insight or whatever. It's just there, which is really nice. And so then, yeah, what matters is you. Yeah. What matters is you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And All that's my can. experience when we coach. Right. That's what matters. And so, of course, I matter more to myself mm. when I matter to my coach. Mm. And I matter in a way that's very really positive. There's a, there's a, an assertion that's often unspoken and that is that there's something good in us that we want to that we might discover there's something wise there's oh something good there's something useful well yeah like the whole discussion yeah, about people being deep is that we may not even think of ourselves as deep some people may not but yeah. i know that people are so yeah. i often am the one holding that space holding that belief for someone until they can step into it or grow into it i think in your case that's not, you know, you, I think, you know, that you're wise, you know, that you're delightful, you know, with a lot of light emphasis on the light. Um, but we all do need permission to yep. like, move to that. I think sometimes to move to that next level or to really hold that next level or to dive into it the way you did with your break. Well, yeah. And I think that, um, Life is a conversation. Life is a dance. Life is a journey. Mm. Uh, and yeah. when you do these things with another person present, and by present, I mean really present, uh, yeah. it changes everything. It does. I know that I'm learning how to phrase what I do and meet your goal seems so 
clear and simple, but it does have to be taken in context of like who I am and how I work, that it's not a slam dunk quick, you know, sort of thing. And I suppose I, I expect people to get to know me. I mean, people often take years to decide to work with me. They'll stay in touch. Sure. They'll read my newsletters. They'll read my blog. They'll read and they'll, or people know me for decades, literally. And then they'll read my news, you know, they're old friends or something. And I, I'm very moved by that. I'm not at all. It's not a fast thing. Coaching can be very quick. We don't have to like stay engaged. It's not like I'm trying to turn someone into a five-year project. Um, but there is a kind of quietness and depth in the space that I'm holding. And there's a patience that I'm learning like, oh, okay. And including with my marketing and helping other people with theirs, it's like, don't expect results immediately. That's not what this is. If you want to bring meaning to the world, you can't, meaning is not something that comes dehydrated and you add water, you know, meaning is accreted, meaning is developed. So give it time. And I think I'm also saying to people, give me time and I'll show you, or I'm also with them saying, I'll give you time. And I know you'll show me. There's this- you know, that's interesting. I mm. we, we bought a couple of rose bushes this year. I, when I was living in California, I had a bunch of rose bushes and I loved them. And I like to have cut roses around the house. Well, I got these rose bushes here and they were in pretty bad shape. And I've been nursing them along for three or four months. And the neighbors gave me some really beautiful organic stuff to put on them. Um, someone else said, well, if you want a rose bush to bloom, boil a banana peel to get the potassium out of it and then take the water and cool it down and put it on them. And I've been doing that. So all of a sudden, th- there are these huge shoots coming out of these rose bushes and the buds are beginning to form. And I'm being reminded that their goal is they're going to bloom, but they got to do it in their time and in their way. Oh my God. And that's what I experience when I work with you is, is like whatever blossoming may occur in me um, will occur in the right time it, with the right attention and the right care. And it looks to me as if that's what you're talking about. Yes. I really don't know what else to say. I mean, I adore roses and I just, I I often use the metaphor of a garden for someone's project or their focus or their calling or their goal um, because focus is so important to me. And it's so natural to me to focus on someone's goal with them and actually helping them protect focus and protect the goal, even while they're working 40 hours a week and taking care of kids or older parents or whatever. That's all very real to me, but to see someone as blossoming like a rose. um, I mean, that's important to the Sufis. That's important in the East and the West, that metaphor of the blossoming rose. And that, and that your point about the potassium too, that it has to be nourished. Yeah. Sometimes we plant a seed. I mean, we do, we do the equivalent of planting a seed and then getting kind of ticked off when it doesn't, I don't know, we can't eat the fruit in two weeks. This is the kind of culture that you and I are in. Yeah. And that you and I deal with. And it's like, yeah, we're reasonably, the, the culture, we, we make our peace with the culture, but we know better. Like, we know that's not, that's not how things really happen. Yeah, yeah. Even if that's what's being sold to us. Yeah. And I think I'm a space for, because I'm so focused, it can be really quick. It can be a matter of a couple months. But there are certain things I do expect of the other person to be doing during the time. Like the, the sessions with me are useful, but it's what happens in between. Like I didn't know about the break, the whole inner dialogue that you had about your break um, until now, even though we talked about it, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And I think that's exactly right. There's a seed and then you watered it and you focused on it and you enjoyed it. You, you ate the fruit. So I don't that's know. Right. That just makes me feel really good. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's that's really what I'm seeing in your response to this question of meet your goal. What does it mean? Uh, is delightful to me because it is what I experience in a way. And I think we need it right now. I think we really need this ability to function in the world in a way that is focused and goal oriented without becoming automatons in a, and doing that in a way that our human is sparked by our humanity rather than anything else and by our individuality. And that's what I'm hearing you say. 
You're amazing. I love how you talk about my work. I'm totally happy to give you the last word here. Like what he said. 